Ba 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 beautiful lovelies it's Emmy how are you it's great to see you and welcome back today I'm gonna to be attempting to make a homemade Big Mac now I know lots of people have done this already but I am going to be testing a recipe that comes from from this I printed this out this is the PDF it's called the McMenu do-it-yourself McDonald's restaurant recipes. I first learned about this in an article I'll put down below when I was researching the famous original McDonald's french fry recipe and this came up. This is an anonymous PDF that is very extensive. It is 33 pages long and the theory goes that it was written by someone probably in McDonald's management, a supervisor, someone that knows a lot about McDonald's because the instructions in these recipes are so very specific. It talks about toasting the buns, dressing your burgers, the type of ketchup, it talks about wrapping your burgers, reheating the burgers, uh, the types of pickles, like it's just so very specific. So the very first thing we need to do is make our special Big Mac sauce. Now according to this recipe we need to mix it and then microwave it and then allow it to cool. So we need to do all that first before we assemble our burger. So let's do that. Quarter cup of mayonnaise. Special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame bun. Okay, We've got Miracle Whip. Brand new container Miracle Whip. Love that it has a little dollop on the top. Quarter cup of that. Eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Dried minced onion. This, I feel like, is key to get that McDonald's like hamburger flavor. One teaspoon of those. One teaspoon of sugar. And by the way, in case you were wondering, I am going to do a side-by-side -side comparison with a true Big Mac versus this. Granted, this recipe does seem to be a bit dated, from maybe the 1980s or 90s, because it refers to the McDLT. It turned into the McDeluxe or something. French dressing, look at that color. That's going to give us that signature orangey color. Now, if I can just open the bottle. <laughs> it says two heaping tablespoons. One. Whoa. That's definitely heaping. My caramba. Half tablespoon of sweet relish. Have you ever seen these measuring spoons before? Christina Cho sent these to me, and they are odd amount measuring spoons. So, for example, this one is two teaspoons, and this one is two tablespoons. I thought, I don't know, would I ever use those? And I actually use them quite a bit. The two tablespoon is really great for doling out cookie dough. Two teaspoons of dill relish, okay. Okay, one teaspoon of vinegar. Nope. One teaspoon of ketchup. Whisk this up. And then it says to microwave this for 25 seconds. Interesting, right? Okay, here we go. Give this one more whoopsie woo woo mixy mix. So now we're gonna refrigerate this and let this sit and melt together for at least an hour. This is the burger seasoning and apparently this is shaken on every burger patty while it's cooking. Four tablespoons of salt. Two tablespoons of MSG found in practically every tasty snack. One teaspoon of black pepper. Quarter teaspoon of salt. Now we're gonna mix this all together. I bet this would be good on all kinds of things because basically we're making an enhanced salt and pepper mix, right? Next, I'm gonna share with you what I did already to prepare the hamburger patty. So the recipe says specifically to use 80% lean ground beef and then to take your pound and to cut it into about 10 pieces. Then take a portion of meat and then sandwich it between two layers of parchment paper or wax paper, and then press it down nice and flat till you get a circle that's about four inches in diameter. 
Once you've done that to all of your patties, then you're gonna place them in the freezer so they are frozen. This is a cast iron griddle, and I'm gonna heat it up nice and cracking hot on medium high. The way I like to test if my griddle's hot enough is I splash it with a bit of water. And when the water really dances around, not just sizzles, but really dances like that, then I know that it's hot. Number one, and number two. Take our seasoning and liberally shake that on there. The menu recipe says that we're supposed to add a little pressure, which I don't really do, but I say that's what's done at McDonald's. So you see how it's getting a little, it's not really blood, but it looks like blood coming up on the surface. Now we're ready to flip. Scrape underneath, flip. Oh yeah, lovely. And there we go. Those patties are almost done. Got a sesame bun, and we need the top and the bottom, and we need the bottom of another bun. I'm gonna pull my patties off. And in the residual little grease there, I'm gonna toast up my buns. Soak up that nice greasiness from the burgers. This shouldn't take any time at all. Alrighty, boom, smoky in here. Alrighty, lovelies, we are ready to assemble our homemade Big Mac. This is the treasury of top secret recipes. I found this book at the thrift store for a whopping $2.99. It includes like everything you can think of, including all the fast food places, Olive Garden, Pizza Hut, McDonald's, Chili's, all the restaurant clones, Mrs. Fields. I wanna try that one. They have a version of the Big Mac. I really do appreciate the diagram there because for as extensive as the Mick menu is, it does not include the onions in terms of where to place those. But according to this, the onions are located right over the special sauce. The middle bun and the bottom bun. Special sauce. Reconstituted onions. I drained out the water. And on top of here an eighth of a cup of lettuce which is like almost nothing so just a little pinch iceberg lettuce that has been shredded one slice of american cheese right there add one of our patties on top and they said specifically to use the vlasic brand pickles so two pickle slices <laughs> my roommate in college sharon Sharon Rose loved Big Macs. She's what I think of when I think of Big Macs. I think I've only had a couple in my entire life, actually. They also run by my dad. My dad likes Big Macs as well. As a kid growing up, I would always order the hamburger. I have a special love for the McDonald's hamburger. When I was pregnant with my first child, I <laughs> had those every Friday after work. Just one McDonald's hamburger. It just hit the spot so well. At any rate, that's just my little story with the Big Mac. But I do find they're quite good. Now I can actually eat an entire one. I think that was another thing when I was younger. I couldn't finish a Big Mac, but I find them absolutely delicious. And uh, let's finish building this. <laughs> We're going to put this on top of this. Our toasted bun on top of that. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. The homemade McDonald's. Big Mac, look at that. That is a triumph. Look how tall it is. So I'm ready to eat this burger, but after reading the recipe, it says that I'm supposed to cue this or use the proper cueing method, which allows the flavors of the burger to meld together. And it makes sense because the cheese isn't really even melted. And then we're supposed to fold it like this. Now you let this sit for five to eight minutes, let the flavors meld. And then when it's still wrapped, you microwave it for 15 seconds. That's the proper queuing method. All right, so we'll let that rest. I have microwaved this or queued it for 15 seconds and I cannot wait to give this a taste and to compare it with the real deal Big Mac. So here we have them side by side and let's go ahead and give these a taste. Now, let's see what the homemade version looks like after it's been cued. Let me wrap it. This wax paper reminds me of like the old school kind of diner hamburgers. Love those, kind of like in and out style, wrapped in paper. So great. Alrighty, here it is. It looks great.
beautiful. Now let's compare it with the real deal. Wee! That looks pretty appetizing as well. Look at the even distribution of the sesame seeds. Like that. See some pickles, see some lettuce there. Side by side, it looks like the McDonald's one is actually a little bit larger than the homemade one. Let's look at the interior of the real Big Mac. There's our patty. Definitely see lots of pepper there. Underneath that, we've got lettuce, pickle slice, sauce. Well, the sauce doesn't look as orange as I remember. Look at that. And then beneath that, we have another patty. Ooh, melted cheese. More sauce, definitely see some onions and some lettuce. So we got the order of the stack correct. Let's taste the original first. Alrighty, here we go. Itadakimasu. That's delicious. That dehydrated onion flavor is so much what I associate to a McDonald's hamburger. I love the crunch of the pickle. There's a little of that dilly, sour, briny, pickly flavor without being overpowered by the pickle. But I feel like it's such a key component to a Big Mac. And in that combination with the onion, such a signature McDonald's flavor to me. The other thing I find surprising is although there are three layers of bread in there, it doesn't feel too bready or taste too bready. The sauce is there to flavor everything, but it's not so saucy. As I recall, I felt like it was saucier as a child. And just a little bit of lettuce in there. Personally, I would like a little bit more lettuce, but then it wouldn't be a Big Mac. <laughs> a little bit of cheese in there to give it a little extra richness, but nothing overpowers every, anything. It just all works together very, very nicely. The meat patties are very thin, don't really taste particularly beefy or flavorful. They're just hamburger patties but they're there and <laughs> it's delicious. And the buns are just really the delivery mechanism for the entire sandwich. But that's totally what I remember a Big Mac tasting. A little bit sweet as well. You get a little crunch of the pickle, good. Alrighty, now let's compare it to the homemade version. Now this version is much thicker, much taller than the original. See that side by side? And I think some of that has to do with the patty thickness. The patty thickness is very uniform in the McDonald's one. And the buns seem to be a little bit thinner too. But, alrighty, let's give this a go, finally. Here we go. <laughs> In the nine months. Mm. Mm. That is a very good dupe. It's not exactly the same as McDonald's, but actually there are some parts of the homemade version that I actually prefer. It's more juicy and succulent. And I think that might have to do with the higher meat to bread ratio than the original, but not by much. It's still a very thin patty. And the amount of sauce in there I think is a little bit higher too. So it's just more succulent. And the amount of greens I think is pretty similar. The cheese is a little more meltier and it's just a little bit more flavorful, yet the original is still very good. Mm. Now, if I didn't have the original Big Mac next to me, I would say this is 100% like a Big Mac because it hits all of those flavor components. You have the special sauce, you have the crunch of the pickle, you have the crunch of the lettuce, you have a little bit of that cheese the bun, and the two layers of patties. It tastes very, very much like a Big Mac. But when I have it side by side, it's not quite the same. Hmm. The homemade one has a beefier flavor. It has more of those kind of grilled, meaty flavors that you get when you caramelize meat on a grill top, those little brown bits that we love so much. It has that flavor. It also has more of a texture too. The McDonald's one has a more uniform texture. Well, this one has a little bit a little more chew, a little bit more crumble to the meat itself. In terms of flavor, the McDonald's one is a little more homogenous. Mm -hmm. It's a really great balance of salty, sweet, 
crunchy, tangy, creamy all together, while the homemade one, those bits are a little bit more distinctive. Mm -hmm. The beef patty is a little bit more separate. You get the ooze of the sauce more. You get the big crunch of the pickle and it's a little more tangier. So the components of the homemade one, I feel like are a little bit more separate and distinctive while in the McDonald one, everything is more homogenous, which makes for a great total package. When you go there and you're like, yes, your Big Mac right into my brain. And the homemade one definitely is a Big Mac too in all of its structure and form, but the flavors are more distinctive. And in my opinion, I like the homemade one better for those reasons. But having said that, for the amount of work, preparation, and cost that went into the homemade version of the Big Mac, it's hard to say that this actually beats the original because you can just go through the drive-thru, pick this up, and have a meal right then and there of the classic, traditional Big Mac that most of us know. Mm hmm Mm, so good. Mm. Alrighty, my lovelies, there you have it. That's how you can make a homemade McDonald's Big Mac at home that is super close to the original, and I would say, in fact, better than the original. It does require, surprisingly, a lot of effort. I mean, I suppose once you make the sauce and once you've made the seasoning for the burger patty, that's a lot of the preparation, and you've got the patties already. So once you've done the initial work, it's actually not that much work, but if you are interested in making one of these at home, this recipe is really, really close. All right, my lovelies, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. I love hearing from you. Like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. <laughs> I have burger in my teeth. Isn't it lovely? Oh my gosh, so good.